the, the quick background, uh, my business partner and I started this business back in 2005, so almost 15 years ago. And we had no prior countertop fabrication experience, right? We're, we're classically trained business guys, sales and marketing. And so a lot of people, when we got into the industry, are like, you know, listen, you're going to get crushed because you don't know anything about the, this particular industry. And our comment was, we don't need to know about the industry. We know how to run a business. We understand sales and marketing. We're going to hire great people to do the technical part. And um, so fast forward 15 years and we have 162 employees, um, largest fabricator in Illinois, one of the largest ones in the Midwest, which was never our goal, right? Our goal is to be the best, right? So world-class customer service um, and our number one asset are employees, right? It's the most important thing to us. And our theory is if you go hire great employees, then let them be great. Right. So if I hire you, Rebecca, because I think you're a great person, you can do great things. I need to make sure you understand what your goals and expectations are, what I'm expecting of you. Make sure I give you all the resources and then let you go be great. Because what so many people do who don't have management experience is they hire somebody great and then they put their thumb on them and they manage them. And they manage them to mediocrity and eventually they leave because they're not happy. They're not challenged. They can't do the things that they want to do. So I personally spend 50 percent of my time building culture in the company, right? Making sure that everybody's happy. It's a safe haven for them. They enjoy coming to work. Now look, I get it's work, right? You wake up in the morning, like, hey, I'm not going to party, I'm going to work, but at least we want to make it enjoyable, right? Um, and I think part of that is making sure you understand what's expected of you every day, right? When you come home and you want to talk to your friend or significant other or spouse, and they say, how was your day? How did you do? You need to be able to answer that. Well, I think I did okay because nobody yelled at me. It's not a good response, right? It's like, yeah, I hit all my metrics today. Or, yeah, I overachieved today. Or you know what? I didn't do as good today, but I'm going to do better tomorrow. But at least you know what's happening. And our theory is that if you give everybody, if you have transparency and you let everybody know what's expected of them, they will help you get to the promised land, right? And the promised land as a business owner is making as much money as possible, right? And there's so many people that are afraid to say that, but that is the truth. Now, listen, I don't get to take all that money. It goes back to my employees. It goes back to my facility, buying equipment, taking care of my customers, marketing, all those things. But to be successful at all those things, you have to make money. For the companies that didn't have good culture prior to COVID-19, I think a lot of them struggled and continue to struggle because their employees were never really bought in or engaged. For us, our employees trust us because we're transparent. We communicate all the time. And it, during this COVID-19, we're communicating even more, right? We're sending out daily emails. We're doing Zoom calls. We're picking up the phone and talking to people more often than we ever did. Number one, to give everybody, make sure how they, how are they doing, right? This is stressful. We have everybody that is in an administrative function, whether it's sales or project management or customer service or engineering, everybody's working from home. But then we still have guys out in the field and we still have people in the office. So it's about, you know, other than this week, I've been go I'm going into the office every single day. And it's walking around, it's making sure, how is everybody feeling? How are their families doing? Let me tell you what's going on in the company. And I think when they know that I have it under control, then they feel good. And then allows them to go do their job and not worry about the other things. Um, we made sure we gave everybody all PPE early on, right? So. Spreading everybody out in the facility, giving them masks, giving them face shields, um, you know, having different um, zones set up in the shop. You know, we, we broke down the break room so you can't have 40 people in a break room, right? You only have people one every 10 feet. So I think when they saw the management team doing all those things for employees, it made them feel good, right? Taking everybody's temperature in the morning, taking everybody's temperature. Um, and you have to have empathy because everybody's dealing with this differently and everybody's having different challenges. You know, we're all going to work every day so we can take care of ourselves and our families and then all the things that we have. And so when that gets disrupted, people start to get nervous, right? So my responsibility, my management team's responsibility is to make sure everybody knows that we're working in their best interest to make sure that this company not only survives, but then thrives in a post-COVID-19 environment. Anybody who uh, had symptoms uh, um, or wasn't feeling well or had somebody in their immediate household, right, that tested positive had symptoms, 
we told them not to come in and they stayed they stayed on uh, paid for those two weeks while they had to be in quarantine so there were no negative effects for anybody if they needed to take the time off so there is the payroll protection plan um and then obviously there is the um you know the additional funding that went into unemployment right so if normal unemployment based on somebody's pay wage in a certain state was let's say 350 dollars a week the government was automatically adding 600 hours a week to that number so for a lot of people and this is for the challenge that some fabricators are experiencing for a lot of people they're actually making more money or potentially making more money on unemployment and so you know i'm on these calls and people are saying hey i can't get my employees back i go back to that's a culture issue because if you were doing your job originally and if you were treating your employees right then they want to come back because they also know that unemployment's a temporary position right so again it's, it's it was a temporary fix um but for us you know we we laid off about 25 percent of our staff we brought back 25 percent of those people back and every one of them came back and was you know excited to come back and not, not one of them said no i'm going to stay and wait you know and, and work on my unemployment so i think i think this is a little bit of a um a shock to a lot of owners in terms of maybe they thought they had a good handle on their employees and the loyalty, but maybe this gives them an opportunity to, to reset. To every one of our, we have 14 managers with, I think probably average tenure of about nine years for us, right? And so we went to every manager and said, you're always working on projects to make your department better. What are the top three things that are causing your department not to be great? Okay. And we call these AFPs or action for profitability. And then each manager fills out these forms and it's like, Hey, here's what the issue is. Here's the problem it's causing. Here's the impact it has financially, labor wise, quality. And then here's what I need to fix it. Labor wise. Here's what I need money to fix it. Sometimes there's no money involved. You can just, by the way, you change things. And then what's the overall impact to the company? And so every department is working on, um, and then we and then we all kind of sit around as a group. Now we do it virtually, and somebody will say, "Hey, here are the three things I'm working on," and then the rest of the team decides on the one thing that you should work on right now. So we say, "All right, Rebecca, just focus on this one first." And then when you get that done, you go report back, and all of a sudden now you accomplish that item. I think every good company, regardless of what industry you're in should be taking this opportunity. We're, we're Think about how the economy was great before all this, right? So we're running fast, everyone's working hard, things are good, and we're not working on things that we should be in a lot of cases. And so this is an opportunity for everybody to kind of, you know, reset, refocus, recalibrate, and come out of this bigger, better, stronger. That's the idea.